Hey everyone, today you're gonna learn what an object-oriented programming is. That is one of the lessons from my course that covers the object-oriented programming and Revit API in depth. If you want more information, you can reach out to me via the email in the description or in the pinned comment. Before getting started, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave some comments and hit the notification button. Object-oriented programming, what it is? I found a couple of great explanations and to be honest, all of them are correct. Uh, the main idea is how much we abstract ourselves away from it. And the first explanation is the first definition actually of it is it's a way to model the real world. To be honest, it doesn't say anything to us. It just gives us an idea of what is possible with this, but that is too abstract. I took it from the book called uh, Clean Architecture by Bob Martin, an amazing book that everyone should read, but it's actually too abstract for us. But I'll always kind of reference to it so it's going to be easier for us to relate to it. The second explanation, uh, explanation is it's a computer programming model that organizes software design around objects rather than functions and logic. And the third one, which is actually a pretty cool explanation, and all of them are kind of cool. It's a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which can contain data and code data in the form of fields and code in the form of procedures, often known as methods. If you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, it doesn't make any sense to you, right? So we need to kind of explain things and understand why that happens, why we actually need to use this. So the first thing that I want to look at is that it says it's a programming paradigm. And that is really interesting what a paradigm is. So before even talking about object oriented programming, we need to know about, we need to know what a paradigm is. And to put it simply, the way I see this is just a way of perception of something is how we understand things is how we go about solving some particular things. So our brain cannot perceive surrounding world as a whole with all the small details. You know, there are a lot of stuff going on in environment that you cannot understand as a whole with all of its details. So how we actually, when we have that huge problem, huge task that actually requires a lot of work, how we can actually understand it and the answer to this is by simplifying it. So the main takeaway to really understand something, to really comprehend something and master it is by simplifying it, make it easier, make it go, like go from the real simple stuff and step-by-step step going uh, to more advanced uh, features. Because as a human being, you cannot comprehend everything right away. So you can reach the master level by starting with a general concept and then going more in detail. What I'm actually heading towards that the, program, the programming paradigm is that general concept that actually defines the way of turning a task. So you have any task that you need to solve create a program that is going to do something for you, something meaningful to you. And you take that task and turn it into the code, right? So into the working code. And uh, if we check out, if you look at the process of what that should, of how that goes. So a human ta takes a task. So you have a task that you need to solve. Then uh, he breaks it into parts. And actually, these parts are described by the paradigm and then turn these parts into the code. We'll check out all of these features 
in detail a little bit later on uh, when we will go to the example. Right now, for me, it's really Im important to drive the point home uh, and tell you how important object-oriented programming is. And then we will come back to this and see how is that related. So the paradigm you can actually, you can be already familiar with is the procedural paradigm because it's based on the concept of procedure call. And to put it simply, it's based on the sequence of actions. A very simple example is, let's say you wanna cook something. You need to go to the store, buy ingredients, bring them back and cook them, cook them, right? So this is called an algorithm, just a simple sequence of actions. Actually, that is something that we do on a daily basis. We follow some algorithms to reach some actions, right? You need to cook something, you need to go somewhere, uh, you need to finish something and all of that stuff. And uh, when it comes to programming, that kind of approach, that is, the first appro that is the first approach that pops into your head. So whenever you, you need to deal with a task, this is the first approach that you may think about because that is really similar to what we do on a daily basis. We think of doing something in an algorithmical way, but there is a huge drawback to this. When it comes to something really complex, you understand that writing this within one procedure or just using a sequence of actions is quite complex because what will happen with complex systems is that you will end up in millions lines of code and eventually it won't be maintainable. So at some point you won't be able to add something new to it because it's going to be too complex for a human being to understand. So that is the whole idea. Getting back to what I was saying, we as a human beings, we cannot understand too complex things. To understand them, we need to kind of break them into smaller parts so we can eventually get back to this and add something new and extend this. So, but with this approach, with procedural approach, at some point it's gonna to become too complex. And we as a human being, we cannot understand this anymore. So we will need to rewrite everything. So it's going to be easier for us to rewrite everything because now we don't know where to put new code, where to take it from. So this is where the object-oriented programming, this is where that paradigm comes into play. So why object-oriented programming is easy to understand for a human being? Because we organize software design around objects. And now you may think like, but what an object is, is also like, it's also like too abstract for us to understand what is an object. Object is something that has its state and behavior. And it's really easy uh, to think in terms of objects for us because we are surrounded by objects. Right now you're seeing it, you're sitting in front of the monitor, you have your keyboard, you have your mouse, you have the table, all of these are objects, right? These are objects. So now, and again, getting back to what I was saying that the paradigm actually determines how you break your task into parts, which parts you're gonna break that task into. This is what your paradigm defines. And in that case, we break the task into objects instead of just some actions. Right, so now we break that task into objects. And what is really cool is that, let's think in terms of objects. If you have a keyboard and you want to add a new functionality to this, for example, you wanna add some new cool features to it, you know where to go to add it. You know that if it's related to a keyboard, I'm gonna go to a keyboard object and add it to that. So now with this kind of approach, it's really easy for us as human beings to understand things uh, in objects and really easy to maintain them because 
it's really easy for us to understand where to put new things. So with object-oriented programming, we can reach understandable structure of the code. And that's the reason why it's easy to maintain that. Now I want you to, I want to show you a great example uh, with the Rabbit application. So let's take a Rabbit application as an example. Don't worry if you uh, let's kind of abstract ourselves again away. And let's think that you're not even, that you don't know what a Rabbit is. So you don't know what it is, what kind of software it is. So that is what a Rabbit model looks like. So as you can see, it's like some sort of a house. But because it's a software program, so you may think that that is just a geometry. So basically, of course, we see that some pieces of geometry that uh, we know, like walls, roofs. But in, in, in that case, it's just a simple geometry uh, that helps us visualize what that house is going to look like. Right. So now we only see some stuff that is cool in terms of visualization purposes, but nothing more. And two main questions are, is that just a geometry? And how is that related to the real world? Because I actually want to get back to that explanation uh, that object oriented programming, it's a way to model the real world. And uh, I took that application as an example because we're all surrounded by buildings. And uh, that application is a great example of utilizing the power of object-oriented programming. So let's check out another example, the no relation example. So the example that doesn't relate to, uh, to the real world. So here, if it's not related to the real world, that means that it's just some pieces of geometry. So we create that geometry using some geometrical like uh, analysis with some geometrical approaches. We create these, these pieces of geometry. And at the end of the day, we achieve, eventually we achieve that uh, cool house. But again, it's just a piece of geometry so we can show it to someone and just kind of visualize it but it doesn't store any information in it. It doesn't relate to the real world because it's simply just a geometry. But now let's check the real world example. It's when here we see again that house and now it's not just a simple geometry that that part is a roof and that has all information about it. It knows about its slope. It knows about the thickness, the volume, the area. So all that useful information. So now we're thinking about this as a real world, because when you see a building, you definitely see a roof of it. You see walls, floors and other stuff. The same goes for that example. So here we have also a wall. It's not just the geometry. We don't even call it geometry here. It knows that that is a wall. And it knows about all the useful information related to it, related to the wall. And the same goes for the floor. And again, getting back to what I was saying that it's a paradigm that allows us to design our software around objects. And it's all about interaction between, between them. So this is the way we perceive a task. So we needed to build this sort of a software. And now we broke that task into objects. So we have a wall, we have a floor, we have windows, we have doors. And our software design is around object is around these objects and is around interaction between these objects. So for example, we can place a window into a wall. So here we have an interaction between a wall and a window. And this way, again, it's really easy for us to maintain because eventually if you want to add some new functionality to the wall, you simply know where to go to add it. 
you go to the wall object and add it so that is the whole idea behind this so now we break our task into something into meaningful parts for us into parts that are really easy for a human being uh, to understand because that is so related to us it's easier for us to understand what a wall is and what information that should relate and what actions we should add to this of course if you are an engineer but you can create an analogy with other different things for example a game you have a character and you're giving that character tons of different attributes the name of the character the weight uh, all of that useful stuff so that is also the information related to that character you can even think of you as an object because you a human you have the data about you your weight your first name your last name your gender and you have actions that you can do you can walk you can jump you can see all of these things are are called actions so that is my main idea that now we're not even going to the details we're just understanding that it can really help us in building the real world and why it's the real world because that is so related to us we can easy, easily relate to to objects and understand what to do with them that's it for this lesson i hope that was useful make sure to like the video subscribe to the channel leave some comments hit the notification button and have a nice day